Hey, what's up folks? Welcome back to another Lair by Lair. In today's tutorial, we're gonna take a look at this week's project. It is a lemon keypad. This is a little 3D printed lemon keypad. And in this tutorial, I wanted to focus on the skin texture here. So this is a new feature inside of Cura that's called Fuzzy Skin. And it gives the outer skin of 3D models this really fun texture. Let me see if I can autofocus this. There you go. So you see here, it's got this really cool um, really rough texture but it actually gives a really good grip to your print and if you have something visual where you need a texture like this lemon i think it's just a pretty good way to kind of create this this uh this texture fairly easily and it's all done in the slicer you don't actually have to model this stuff so here's that surface what it looks like with the fuzzy skin texture applied and here it is without the fuzzy skin texture applied nice and smooth so you notice that yeah there's no uh, texture that was modeled here it's just all done in the slicer. So let's jump into Cura and uh, find out some things about this. So here I am in Cura and uh, let's talk about the version of Cura. This is version 4.8. There could be another newer version or rather an older version. Just make sure that you're on at least version 4.8. Excellent. The next thing I want to focus on is the, uh, the printing settings panel. Uh, to pull it up, there's this little search box here and you can just type in anything you want. Uh, this feature is called Fuzzy Skin, so I can just type in Fuzzy, hit the Enter key, and here and under the Experimental uh, tab, you can see here we have the Fuzzy Skin. It's When it's turned off, none of the options show up, so when you check it, it turns it on. Now, since version 4.8, there is a new feature now that is called Fuzzy Skin Outside Only. This is a really important feature because without this, um, this wouldn't really work as a practical print. So let's bring in the model and I'll show you what I mean. So I got my skin model and you can see here uh, in the surface is not textured. It's all nice and smooth. Um, and here with the fuzzy skin, um, if you turn uh, normally before 4.8, uh, before this outside only, let's take a look at what it looks like uh, when we just apply the fuzzy skin uh, to this whole model. It takes a second for fusion to, or for, uh, for Cura to slice it, but under the prepare, you're not gonna see it, so let's go to the preview tab. That gives you a nice uh, visual render, rendering. And here you can see on the inside, it is also fuzzy, the outside's fuzzy, and that's a big problem, uh, particularly for the bottom pieces. They need to be smooth because that's how these pieces snap fit together. The bottom cover needs these little pegs here to snap into, and the kind of core area has to slide into this. So let's turn on this feature now, fuzzy skin outside only, check that and re-slice it. Let's see what happens. All right, so we're getting better there. You can see on the inside, it's nice and smooth, but as we get closer to the bottom, you'll notice that there is some fuzziness going on. And with these pegs here, that's gonna really mess things up. So why is this happening? Well, if we look at the model, you'll notice that there's an opening here, and this is like a port opening for the USB cable, right? Problem is, because the model has that as an opening, uh, Cure really doesn't know that that is an inside feature. It's just the nature of like having an opening like that. So in order to fix that, I kind of had to rework the 3D model, right? So if this is where the problem is happening, I figured why don't I just close that off with a thin wall? That way I can just cut that out when it's done printing. So that's pretty much what I had to do. So let me delete this model, go back over to the prepare tab and then bring in my kind of optimized for fuzzy skin model. So here it is version two and right where the porthole should be, you'll notice that it is now closed off. And if we look on the bottom side, you can see that it's fairly thin. It's only 0.2 or 0.4 millimeters thick, which is about the thickness of a single perimeter. So that was really uh, kind of the goal there, is to make it as thin as I can so that I can cut that piece out later. So let's now that it's a fully kind of enclosed bottom, when I slice it, it should keep all of the inside nice and smooth. So again, make sure our fuzzy outside only is checked and uh, let's re-slice it. And it takes a little bit of um, time to slice it, but um, you'll see here in just a second. And our print time actually uh, went down a little bit. It's now three hours and 55 minutes. 
So go under the preview tab and you'll see here that, hey, everything is nice and smooth now. So this is what I needed to do in order to, uh, to, make, this, uh, to make this inside geometry still stay smooth. And if you look closely at the thin wall, it's so thin that the effect is kind of seeping through the other, surf, the other side, which is okay because that shows that, yeah, it is just a single line perimeter and I was able to cut that away. Um, so let's take a look at uh, under the camera. I'll show you what that turned out like. So over here, you can see that it, yeah, it did print it with a little bit of that uh, texture on the inside, but it's super easy to use an X-Acto knife or rather flush diagonal cutters to kind of trim this away. And that's what I did over here. And you can see my cable is, is in there. Let me disconnect that real quick. And then you can see here, I can still smooth it out a little bit. I just kind of rough cut it out. I could sand that down if I really needed to, but eh, it kind of adds to the texture there. Um, so yeah, that's uh, what I had to do. You can just optimize um, any openings with a thin wall so that you can cut them out later. Yeah, so jumping back over to uh, Cura, you can see here that, uh, that that's looking pretty good. And it doesn't add too much time to your print. You can see it's three hours, 55 minutes. And if I turn this off and slice it again, it's probably maybe a half hour of extra time. Yeah, it's about a half hour or so. So three hours and 27 minutes without a fuzzy skin, with a fuzzy skin, uh, 30 minutes extra to that. So that's that's uh, this particular model. Now I have some other ones that I thought would be kind of fun to play with. Definitely do a Google search uh, for fuzzy skin and you'll see what other folks are printing. There's some good videos uh, by Chep. Uh, Andrew Sink also have some really good videos on, on the feature. Um, Chip did a really good one with a handle for a knife. Uh, that worked really well. You can see Benchy and some other things like a llama and animals is a really good um, kind of way to use this feature. Um, but also take a look at uh, Augustine Floalistic who created a birdhouse um, using this technique. Really, really nice. It actually does the whole thing for something like um, like a birdhouse that has like this uh, this concrete or this stone texture. It works really well for that. Uh, another one here is like a planter. I think planters is a really great way for uh, to add some texture to that, something that'd be really smooth. And then uh, for our stuff, I was looking at the cauldron that I designed for the Circuit Playground Express last Halloween. Uh, this would work really well um, with uh, with the fuzzy skin, and then things like this stand um, for uh, for displays and Raspberry Pi projects. I think a stand would would work really well too because it's printed tall ways, and um, I could actually bring these models in just to kind of take a look at uh, if there's any problems. So first one, uh, let's do the cauldron, and right away I can see that there's a bit of an issue here with the cauldron. And that's this port opening in the back there. So this really shows like even though you have, so I'm gonna turn on fuzzy skin, turn on outside only, and then slice it while I talk about it. Even though that uh, the opening isn't on the bottom, it's any opening. So you have a model like this where it has a hole, um, you might wanna patch that hole if, uh, if, if you need to uh, have it as a part, if it doesn't affect the inside, right? So in this in this model, let's see if that actually affects anything. Yeah, so you'll see wherever your hole is, the inner um, walls of that will also be affected. Um, and, and it's only the Z, as you can see here, there's like some flat surfaces, don't get it. Those do not get any texture. They're just kind of flat uh, top and bottom surfaces. But on the outside, it looks great, right? But uh, if you look here, there is a coil, right? There is a thread that's on the inside. That remains uh, smooth, which is great. And then as soon as that opening happens, all of the kind of inner wall area uh, get turned into the fuzzy skin. And uh, for this particular design, because of the threading, it should work okay. This wall here doesn't really do much uh, for tolerances on any of the other pieces. Um, it's just the bottom piece that needs that. So this one, uh, even though it has a hole and some of the inner geometry is being affected, it's actually okay. So it really depends on like your project, the fitting of it, does that geometry on the inside matter if it's smooth or not? 
And with practical prints that have multiple parts, that's something you got to think about. Uh, but for this one, it's actually a lot easier. I don't have to do a special model just to get my fuzzy skin to work out really well. I haven't printed this out, but I'm sure it looks pretty neat. So that's one piece there, and that's just another look at the kind of problem solving, if I need to or not. And with this one, it's actually kind of fun. I don't have to do anything extra. Uh, and then the last one I wanted to show was the uh, the stand for the mag tag. Uh, that's the e ink display. It, it kind of has like this Santa sleigh magic carpet style um, shape to it. So I think for this one, it would work really well. In this one, inside or out, it, it doesn't have an inside really because it's all just there are holes in it, but let's see what it looks like, right? This is one of those cases where I haven't actually printed it yet, but I think it'll be okay uh, because the holes there, you can just kind of tap them with a screw tap just to smooth out those holes. Um, so here's what it looks like. It does add a little bit of extra time here. Um, but yeah, it's it's a stand. The inside is the outside as well. So um, there's not much of an inside, right? Like those holes right there, it doesn't know that it's an inside because it's a hole. And as we showed, holes are a little bit of an issue, but I think this would print okay. Um, it's fairly thick, so uh, so that should hold on to the bed okay, but of course we can add a brim if we need to as well. Some things I didn't talk about was like the these these actual um, these actual values here. You can, of course you can modify them, but I haven't really played with that. These are default settings that I've just used and they seem to work okay. But as you play around with them, you could change the, uh, scaling of the effects. If you want bigger um, bigger textures, I suppose you can change that up. But uh, I've been using the default, which works pretty well. This makes me think of like some other type of food, maybe uh, some weedy thins or uh, what is it? Some, some ramen noodles or something. Could, some more food, right? I'm hungry. But other than that, that's the feature that I wanted to take a look at today. Um, check out the links in the description if you want to build your own lemon keypad. Uh, that's going to do it for me, but until next time, remember to make a great day. Bye, folks.